and concerning Nigeria, the Lord says that there is a judgment that is looming over the nation. And this judgment will be manifested in the political scene. Players of politics, the Lord wants to visit. And that's the end of my parable about that matter. But the judgment comes. And the effect of the judgment will be seen in the political scene. I am not giving permission to go deeper. But he that has ears, in fact, don't worry, you don't need ears. You will see it happen. <laughs> it, it can even happen today because from this crossover, it's already ripe. A judgment is coming and it is going to be manifested in the political scene. Number two, he said, pray against a riot that is more deadly than the end SARS movement. Pray. What did I say? Now, this word I'm giving is not for it to come to pass. It's so that we can pray. Did you hear that? He said, pray to avert a riot which will be more deadly than the NSAS movement. A riot that can cripple Nigeria. Something happened, which I, do, I want to keep quiet. Something happened, and that thing that happened triggered a riot. So the Lord says, what? I can't hear you. So listen to me very well. This prophecy is not declared for it to come to pass. It's declared so that we can pray. And if we do not pray, you will see a riot. A riot that it would have been, it would have been better if it didn't come. Pray. The rest, they are too heavy for me to, to say. Maybe I will pray on it, and then during January contact, I can tell you that. But I will end here. Pray. That what? To have wrapped a riot. All right, so let me explain the scripture that I presented to us in the book of Ecclesiastes, which is a summary of the trend that this year will carry. He said, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. And I'm saying that 2023 is an offshoot of many unconscious or conscious investments that we have made previously. If you know that the seeds that you have sown were not guided by the principles of righteousness that is in the word of God, then the moment you leave this meeting, go and tarry before God and ask him for mercy. Because those seeds that have been sown will begin to manifest from 2023. Now, let me give you a, a few scriptures to explain what I am trying to say. Uh, hallelujah. Come with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis, chapter 8, verse 22. Go to verse 20 so that I can explain. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour and said, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart 
is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. That's just the point. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. That's the only one I want to read. So, what happened? God brought judgment upon the face of the earth and he found grace in the life of Noah and Noah was preserved in the ark. When Noah came out of the ark, Noah sacrificed unto God. And when God smelled the fragrance of the sacrifice, he repented in his heart. And he said, all right, I will not again smite the earth as I have done. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. You see, seed time and harvest is the seed time that produces another season called harvest. So 2023 is like harvest. The harvest of things that have been sown either consciously or unconsciously. And one of the reasons why we have the comfort of the scriptures is so that you can determine the quality of seeds that you are sowing such that in the day of harvest you can be confident of the return on investment that will come into your space. So this year is a result of the investments that have been made in previous years. Is that clear? I know you won't say amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 5. If you have verse 15, you show me. Maybe the reason why the amen was not strong was because you are not sure of the seeds. I've given you a remedy. And the remedy is, if you notice that the seeds you have sown are negative, go back to God and ask for mercy. You, you see, I'm telling you in a polite way. The judgment of God that we manifest, I say judgment is looming, it's looming. The judgment of God that we manifest will marvel everyone in Nigeria. There are some preachers that will not see media because of the accumulation of iniquity. People will go and commit iniquity and be looking for a way to be accepted. They will scheme men, manipulate men to give them, accord them a reputation that is not recognized in heaven. You are going to be startled by the intervention of God and the judgment that God will bring in this day. Hallelujah. People that are hidden, that have been laboring in quietness, in silence, God will raise them up suddenly. All right. He says, see then. This is the counsel that is given to people that are still in seed time. This counsel is for people that are in seed time. He says, see then that he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. A certain big man was the chairman of a committee, a committee that was saddled with the responsibility of employment in a certain firm. And there was a DEX officer that would screen the invited participants in the employment interview before they come into the committee hall. So the lady was busy screening the candidates and she beheld a certain candidate that is a very likeness of the chairman of the committee. He now went into the boardroom and told the committee chairman that I saw your son. The committee chairman laughed and said, I only have two, two children and they are daughters. I don't have a son. The woman said, there cannot be any mistake about this matter. The guy sitting out there is your carbon copy. The man said, oh my. 
I think I know my own. And there are two daughters. Until the guy came out himself. This, they were supposed to start an interview. And the candidates were not supposed to see anybody on that table until they come in. But because of the agitation, the chairman had to stand up to go check the guys in the waiting room. And indeed, he saw a young man. That was his likeness. He said, young man, who is your father? The guy said, my mother called him copper, copper. Then he remembered that while he was in Baeza, in his youth service, his blood became hot at a, a certain time. And uh, the result of that hot blood was that guy. And the lady never told him that there was anything that came out of that affair. The Bible says, see, do you know, the man saw his seed and he marveled in Lagos. But he didn't know that he was not circumspect in Baeza. May you not see the seed, the harvest of the seed you sowed, and you behave like that man. It, hallelujah. So in order for you not to be bamboozled by the harvest of the seed you sowed in darkness, this scripture is saying, see that ye walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. I remember this word, second. It's a word that is used in shipping. Second navigation. That it means that you are guided by longitude and latitude. So even though you cannot see your destination, if you still stay on the second navigation pathway, you arrive at your destination. So he's saying, see that your walk is a walk of precision that is guided by the principles of righteousness in the word of God so that at the end of the day, you will not be called a fool. Do you, are you there? You will be called wise because you were so conscious of the seeds that you sowed and the outcome was predictable. That was the day that that guy met with his son, lie. You say your father is copper? Yeah. Copper in Baeza. Hey! From that point, the interview was delayed because they had to make contact with the mother. And when he heard her voice, he knew that this was the harvest from his escape. May the Lord give you understanding. So this scripture is, 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 is a counsel. But this counsel is already too late in this matter that I'm presenting. Because this is the counsel that would have guided your sowing. Guided your seed so that you will not be ashamed of the harvest. Many people in Nigeria will be ashamed of the harvest that will come in 2022. You know, I prophesied, but you did not hear. I said the mountain will be made low. <laughs> uh, and the valleys will be what? Will be elevated. There are people today that bask in glory that will be humbled in the days to come. May your eyes see the difference between blessing and greatness. In the name of Jesus Christ. The valleys will be elevated. The cedars of Lebanon, they will be cut low. The crooked paths will be renovated. A level plain ground will be made so that all eyes will see the salvation of God. Amen. I speak in parables. But we are already in 2023, and you will see some people that are champion people now roaming about, they'll be forgotten. Some others will not, it's not just that they'll be forgotten, 
some others will be severely judged and the judgment will be evident. And on the other side, as it was in Goshen, there will be so much light in the camp of men that were diligent to sow the right seeds. The pendulum is going to shift and a new set of functionaries will be put in different places to represent Jesus Christ. Yes, what God has been doing during the time of darkness all these years, you will begin to see it manifest in the open. There are people that God has dealt with. And even though our nation is called the nation of corruption, they have been dealt with severely by God that they can represent his interests anywhere. This 2023, you will begin to see them come out. Even some of the political offices, some of those men are going to be given the opportunity to show Nigeria a different style of leadership. There is change on the horizon, and there will be light in Goshen. But those that have locked in the darkness of our hour of weeping and plundered secretly, the light that will expose all deeds will begin to shine from 2023. Many will be discarded, and others will be appointed by God. It will be a moment of sorrow and rejoicing at the same time, depending on the bread that was cast on the waters. The time to, many days have passed, and the time to find it is here. I want to counsel you. This is a three-fold counsel for everyone under the sound of my voice. The greatest investment you will make in 2023 is to be determined to pursue intimacy with God. Personal intimacy with God. The Lord said that the year is going to be a year of many curves. So that people that have not mastered their work with him will be confused. And there will be likely, there will be likely possibilities of making wrong choices. So the only solution is intimacy with God. Number two, if you have a land, a fallow land in the village, go and cultivate it. Please help me talk to your neighbor. Evangelist Joe, if you have land in Inigede, go and cultivate it. A famine is coming. A famine comes. So get back and cultivate the land. A time will come when your money will have no value in the face of edible commodity. If you have a land, a fallow land, even if you don't have, go and rent. Go back to the land. I counsel you as one that hears from God. What have I said? Go back to the land and become a farmer. May the Lord help us in Jesus' mighty name. Pastor Anduna, look for a land in Boko. You have it. Go back to the land. Those of you in Abuja, there's a place called Logo Local Government. That's where the most fertile land in Benue State is. Go there. They are good people. And talk with them. That Abuja that you came from, What is coming from Logo will be like gold there in the days that I speak of. I have a timeline, but I don't want to trouble you with. Just follow my counsel. Go and farm. In the name of Jesus. You know what? The, you, you saw salary delays in 2022. The one coming is more than what you have seen. So go and 
cut even your backyard. Eh? Do like this. And let maize grow from there. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Finally, I don't want to bore you. You must be sure that the pastor or the minister you are connected to is a genuine man of God. God will judge pastors in 2023. And if you are connected to a wrong one, you will be judged too. I can give you a quick expo on how to know a genuine pastor. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The first sign of a good pastor is that he connects you to the mind of Jesus. The proceeding words of Jesus. Not his words, but he knows what Jesus is saying. He knows the will of Jesus, and that's what he presents to you. So that you can navigate under the guidance that is coming from Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. As you begin to walk under the directive of a genuine pastor, you begin to see what we call inner transformation. The things that you used to desire before, there is a change in your desire template. The things, that's what we call the restoration of the soul. God begins to set your affections on the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. The, you see, there's a change of taste boards. Change of the things that you desire because you are exposed to the counsel of God. If there is no change in your taste boards and what you are running after are things are not God, you are under a pastor that has no link to Jesus. Did you hear what I said? If the emphasis is for you to chase things and not God, the voice you are hearing it's a voice that is contrary to that of the chief shepherd. There should be a growing desire to gain mastery of the things of God. And it will interest you to know that the Bible says that no man knows the things of man except the spirit of man that is in him. And even so, knoweth no man the things of God save the spirit of of God. We have received not a spirit that is of this world but a spirit which is of God that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God which things we speak. Not by words through which man's wisdom teaches but by words that the Holy Spirit teaches when he compares spiritual things with spiritual. You must understand that the things of God are calibrated on the spirit of God. Someone that has the spirit of divination can tell you your name, can tell you your phone number, can tell you the name of your father, can tell you the name of, of your village. You know what he can't tell you? He can't tell you the things of God. For no man know it. The things of man save the spirit of man that is in him. Even so, knoweth no man the things of God except the spirit of God. So divination can tell you your phone number. It will never tell you the things of God. The things of God. The things of God. It is only the spirit of God that knows it. If a preacher begins to expose you to the things of God, your taste buds will begin to shift. Your drive for mundane things will begin to shift. And then your soul will be restored 
the things that Satan used to appease you, to seduce you, they will lose power over your soul because you have been exposed to the things of God. He restored my soul. Then the Bible says that he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Any pastor you are following that righteousness is not the texture of what is being built. The moral code is weak. He will lead you to an embrace with Satan. You will meet with Satan very soon. Parts of righteousness. When God wants to bring you into your inheritance, what he does is that he, he, he releases his government and his government puts you on a constricted path. It's not, it's not a bogus path, it's constricted. I know the Holy Ghost. Just when you are saying, okay, my relationship with God is good enough, then he comes and says, if you want to see me from henceforth, look for me in the night. And he knows night is not convenient. He always puts you on the constricted path so that you can be saved from corruption that is looming. And you connect with this corruption the moment you are exposed to lust. The corruption begins to walk upon your soul. So the paths he leads you are paths that are constricted. Paths that are righteous. Don't tell me that you are following God and you do not desire what is inherent in his nature. God is not lascivious. He doesn't do freestyle. The more you mature, the more restricted you become. That's why he can commit power to you. Power is dangerous. But when he has constrained you, you can handle things that the things of God, you can handle them. The things of God. I was in Lagos and Jesus said to me, from henceforth, use yellow buses. I was a senior star for God's sake. I could buy a car almost any month. I choose to go to the car shop because my monthly salary was enough to buy a car. He said, from henceforth, use yellow buses. How many of you know the yellow buses of Lagos? The one that said, Ajegule, Ajegule. That was what I used. I thought it was for two months. He's testing my heart. It became seven years until I didn't desire to have a car again. Then he came to me in the night and said, a man's life does not consist in the things that he has. Hey, I told God, I said, I, didn't, I don't need seven years to learn this lesson. He said, you don't know how, how vast your soul is. Today, whether I have what to wear or not, I know it doesn't affect who I am. Whether I have what to eat or not, it doesn't affect who I am in God. Whether I have what to drive or not, it doesn't affect anything. One day I entered a bus. And I said, I'm tired of driving. So I just flagged down a bus. And the people in the bus recognized me. And they became quiet until I dropped. They don't know what freedom is. I'm not bound by the cars I ride. I'm still well, well endowed of God, even in the bus without a car, to my name. I was in the yellow buses for seven years. And he said the reason was so that I will know that a man's life does not consist in the possessions he has. God will lead you on the way that is constricted. If your life is still large and loose, you've been kissing Satan in the night. Wake up! The days of lasciviousness have come and gone. God will no longer pardon unrighteousness. In Nigeria, you will see it. He will begin the judgment. Oh, oh. Mm. I speak to you because I've heard God. Who can talk to you? Nobody. But the reason why I'm talking to you is because I heard, I heard Jesus. I heard Jesus. 
Choose the way of the Lord. Can you sing for the way of the Lord? And for the way of the Lord is the way. Participating on Zoom, bring them up and look for Pastor Henry. Look for Pastor Henry. Bring him up. Pastor Henry came to drop me in London at my hotel. As I entered into the lift to move, a white lady rushed and forced herself in. She told me how many degrees she has acquired. That we we're moving from floor zero to four, just zero to four. I had already known of her master's degree of areas of specialization. And she also added that she was great in handling stress. And it's obvious I'm stressed. She, she touched me here like this. Where's Henry? I'm... We have opportunities. To be fake preachers, we have opportunities to be immoral men. In, in fact, sin runs after us. But you know what? I know God. Hey. I know him. You can't hide it from God. Uh, Pastor Henry, what you know about this story I'm telling Please tell us. Because, are you with me? He's, he's my host. This, this is Pastor Henry from London. Sometimes when we tell you some stories, you say, Hi. calm down. Oh, it was not Pastor Henry that was in the... It was me, sir. Oh, okay. Please, go on. We will need your testimony. So we're going from from the ground floor to level four. And this lady came in the lift. Very, very, very pretty lady, English now, lady. Uh, underline the word pretty. <laughs> you, 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 you are not here, you are not here. <laughs> Beautiful. Aika Santo. And, and she came, and she started asking you questions, started introducing herself, all the degrees she's got, the things she can do that she knows when she sees people that are stressed out, she can tell, and that the way she's looking at you now, you have a lot of stress. There was a statement she made, it's almost a, she said, you are so stressed, it seems as if you are carrying the whole world on your shoulders. And she placed her hand that was uh, rubbing it on your, on the backside, your neck side, said, oh, this is stress, that she can handle it. If you wanted her to, to handle it. I was asking you, who are you? Are you an important person? Yes. I, you, I can you, handle You were there. You were there. You say, <laughs> are you an important person? You look important. Now, what I was seeing was not that girl. You see, I was seeing Jesus. 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 He's the person that sent me to London, not that lady. I was looking at Jesus. There is no way you walk with God that he will not lead you through paths of righteousness. Uh, the, I think a word is enough for the wise. The last counsel I want to give is make sure you are connected to a genuine pastor. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Once again, I want to welcome you to the year 2023.